In this video, I want to take a look at the work of Laura Wilson, and I believe that Laura is one of the finest American photographers working today. She's had a very long 40-year-plus career doing editorial work. She actually started her career as Richard Avedon's research assistant on his In the American West series and went on to have her own success much later. Laura has a wide range to what she does. Sometimes these images are beautiful, sometimes they're kind of whimsical, have an element of surprise, and at other times they're downright violent and disturbing, and I think a lot of that's speaks to the range that Laura is able to work with. And I'm actually going to reference two books today. Um, she has a book that she wrote about her time with Richard Avedon called Avedon at Work. And we're going to talk less about this one today. I want to do this when we get more into Richard Avedon later. But I do want to say, as with photo books, these things go out of print. This one, I believe, is no longer in print. And so if you want to order it, you can still find it. But now is the time to do it. The other book that I want to look at is the catalog from her current exhibition at the Eamon Carter Museum. And this is called That Day. So without further ado, let's go look at the work of Laura Wilson. To give you a little bit of context for looking at Laura Wilson's work, I want to begin with Richard Avedon. Now, she was Richard Avedon's research assistant on his In the American West project, which is a multi-year major project that he began in the late 70s. And if you consider how Western art was typically portrayed, um, if you go back and look at painters like Remington and Russell, or even early photographers like Timothy O'Sullivan, typically what we see are these lush, expansive landscapes that define the American West, and they're largely devoid of people or population, and there is a specific look. Even when you do have portraits of people in them, they're usually set in this vast landscape. And what Avedon did with his work um, was a complete divorce from that. And of course, Richard Avedon, being known mainly as shooting celebrities and fashion work in New York City, this was a huge departure for him as well. And the way he chose to portray it, and you probably are familiar with a lot of these images, was to do these large 8x10 images and he put all of his subjects on white backgrounds and the reason he did that was to remove them from the environment that we are so commonly used to seeing and associating with the American West. The reason he did that was to remove that distraction so he could bring out the personalities of the people involved and I think what he was looking to do was to really update uh, what we see and what we think of as the American West into the people who actually live there. So it was definitely more of a realist approach. Uh, these two gentlemen are uh, prisoners at a prison in San Antonio, and they were looking for people with tattoos at the time, and there's a large section of text in here. But they are not shot in the prison. Well, they actually are, but they're shot on white backgrounds, so the viewer does not uh, have that to place the context within. So it strips all that away and allows you to concentrate on the individual. Now, Laura's own work is highly influenced by Avedon's um, and her time spent with him but it is probably not as extreme as removing everybody from a background, but it is a realistic view of the American West. And all that to say, I wanted to give you some context as we get into this. And I'm actually going to begin with uh, this image that is uh, is cropped off on the cover here, but this is an image that she did. Uh, this is actually taken in California, and this gentleman is a stunt cowboy. And it's very interesting. She goes into it in the text here. Um, but this is a guy who was very macho, and, and, and you know, it's a dying breed of actor, um, the stunt cowboy and you know he goes on to saying here that you're not a real actor a real stuntman unless you've been in a motion picture and really westerns really aren't used as much anymore and so this occupation is kind of dying out but what i love about this and it's a multi-image series that she did in color here and it's it, you see this in laura's work quite a bit where there are two sides to the story and there's a little bit of an irony that's shown and here you have this you know uh, very you know manly testosterone filled stuntman who is essentially falling off of his horse in the image. And so I think that represents the duality that you're going to see a lot in Laura's work. And so I'm going to go back to the beginning here and uh, start here with, um, this is a series of images that she did. And I think one of the ways that Laura works very interestingly as a documentary photographer is that she does a lot of magazine work. And sometimes these works are commissioned, but more often than not, they start out as personal projects and she finds ways to get them done and then offer them for publication and so this is a series of images that were taken in Webb County Texas called the border and right here this is a Texas Ranger who patrols the border and again we see that duality and seeing the border from two sides and these images you know they're not really pretty in a lot of ways um, the border is, between Texas and Mexico is probably one of the most highly trafficked borders in the world and for years 
um, you know, law enforcement has grappled with trying to control illegal immigration as well as a large amount of drug trafficking. And it changes all the time, it evolves, it grows. And what is essentially this battle going on between people trying to get in on one side and law enforcement on the other, um, I think is, you know, it's fairly interesting and, and, and I, I like the way that she goes into this. Uh, first of all, the portraits, and one of the things that Laura um, has stated before is that rather than trying to find beautiful people to shoot, she likes to look for character and things that uh, provide personality, make stuff different. And I love all the silver, like on the gun barrel and the, the belt buckle and an image and a gentleman, who, this was taken in 1994, but is, is so definitively Texas in, in many ways. And then on the other side, you have you know people trying to cross the Rio Grande. You have uh, drug sniffing dogs that sniff out not only illegal drugs, but also humans hiding under tarps. And so these are really dark images in a lot of ways. Um, I think, you know, Laura has stated that Henri Cartier-Bresson is one of her uh, major influences, but I also think that her work has a tremendous nod to Robert Frank because the images end up being about a raw essence a lot of the time and not so much about beautifully placed composition. And I think that's what's important. I think that's what sets Laura apart. And, you know, her subject matter varies wildly. You know, this is also the debutante cotillion. This was two different Februaries. Um, these were taken in Laredo, Texas. And this is the, um, uh, there's a group called the Society of Martha Washington and they do this debutante ball and they parade around in these opulent dresses that you know cost upwards of thirty thousand dollars and you see these women wearing these and getting ready to go to the ball and again the sense of humor and surprise here let's come back to that image but you know they can't sit down so you know even trying to rest in these things is, is cumbersome and ironically being the Society of Martha Washington taking place in Laredo Texas which is a border town which is largely claimed by Mexico in many ways um, it, it, there's there's an irony there but also you know these women they can't sit down so being transported to the ball they get dressed and they literally strap them in the back of the semi and transport them that way so you know things like the sense of humor the sense of irony um, these are all part of Laura's work and I think you know also there is a non-judgmental honesty I guess <laughs> to say something that sounds real heady there but you know, it's not her job as the photographer to make up her mind of what how you're to interpret the images. And I think that that's important. And I think she shows both sides. And I think that's, you know, what I want to stress with this. Um, this is a series of images on cockfighting. And this is in Webb County, Texas. And cockfighting is a sport that is highly illegal. Um, in fact, you can do jail time just for being caught owning spurs. But, you know, these are essentially these guys that, that have roosters and cocks and they make bets on these things. And it's a fight to the death. And... What this represents to me, although these images are, are you know, a heavier subject that are more, more difficult to look at, but the way she captures this, but also the way she is able to infiltrate uh, various things um, to provide us with images that no one else has done. And so something like this, where people who engage in the sport of cockfighting are very leery of undercover police or reporters or anything of that nature, it's, it, it goes undocumented. And so for her to work her way in here, and it wasn't always easy. She talks about trying to get in with one in Oklahoma and being pulled over and questioned and, and uh, kind of got a little scary for her. But anyway, um, brutal images, but at the same time, I think, have this sense of beauty to them where you know these are beautiful animals and you know i guess the irony is they're engaged in a fight to the death here and uh i love this portrait of this guy's hands with the with the spurs um a lot of character uh, just the wrinkles and the age of the individual um, just really amazing amazing work um you know to contrast that a little bit more here again um this is a series done with, and this is one of my favorites, these trick riders. And these are women who dress in sequence and they participate in a rodeo. This was taken in Fort Worth, Texas in 2001. And I'm going to come back and show that image last. But these women will come out in the rodeo and do stunts where they're falling off the horse. And, and again, the dichotomy, the irony, the two sides to it. Uh, she has this wonderful portrait of these two women in the dressing room that we see in these images riding the horses. But here they are undressed. And what strikes you is something that is glamorous and beautiful on the surface when stripped underneath you realize first of all if you look at the physique of these two women they are tough and then beyond that you start to see bandages and the leg brace and you realize that this is a brutal sport that these people are engaged in and but I think that's part of the beauty of it is there's those equal two sides and the way Laura tells that story over a, a, a sequence of images I think is just outstanding uh, one of her more recent projects I think that's quite interesting is, is this whole series on six-man football 
And these are teams that exist, uh, you know, in the West in places like Nebraska, New Mexico, Montana, uh, even Colorado, where the population just isn't enough in the school where they have a traditional 11 man team. So they play six man football. And she was, she talks about this in the text, but the inspiration for this is that it's a much different game when there's only six men. Um, the images or sorry, the sport, the speed moves very quickly. There's a lot more action than, than what we normally think of with American football. But she also mentioned too, that the conditions that she photographed these in are really pretty crude, uh, very dimly lit, pretty much at night. And she went with black and white film and just used an on-the-camera flash with these. And I think the resulting images are very strong and very powerful. Um, the flash is a little garish at times, but the fact, I mean, that's how she was able to get in and get the action on these. And I, I, I think they're, they're really beautiful images. And also when you consider, I, I think also, you know, I mentioned the nod to Robert Frank that comes through on these sometimes. It's not always about having this perfectly composed, beautiful image. It's about showing things as they are in reality. And I think that's one of the things that makes Laura Wilson important. Another personal project that Laura did was this uh, series of images Images on the Hutterites and the Hutterites are a religious group of people that live in Montana and in the United States if you're familiar with the Amish or the Mennonites it's along those lines but probably even more conservative than either one of those groups um, you know it's a religious group that lives a very simple and solitary traditional lifestyle and you know they look down on um, what they feel are values that define you know modern society like personal freedom or financial ambition and photography is really not allowed in these groups uh, they don't want to be photographed it is just not part of who they are in their personal constitution. And so I think, again, you know, and this is a complete 180 from something like the cockfighting images, but this is another group that, you know, does, you have to warm up to them to be able to photograph. And there aren't a whole lot of photographs. For instance, in this series, you don't see any of the men. Um, Laura mentioned that she was fascinated with this group, and this was a, you know, a personal passion project of something she wanted to document. Uh, with her camera and she actually made two or three trips with no camera at all just to get trust and gain acceptance with the group um, and I think that's really important because I think a lot of photography now we think of as being fast uh, particularly with street photography even social documentary where we don't consider the subject as much and uh, we're looking for something that's off the cuff and that's not how it always works and I think the fact that Laura does this first of all it gives us photographs that are undocumented anywhere else and they're very unique uh, but I think also just the respect for the subject matter is is very important as well and it's interesting because there was a story Laura was telling in an interview where she finally had gained permission for to take an image of one of these young women and she told her mother and her mother kind of said no we, we don't believe photography um, is part of what we do and 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 you're not allowed to have your image made and she said but mom she's shooting black and white film and for some reason that made it okay i guess by that point um, but one of my favorite images is this portrait it's a group portrait of these hutterite women uh, on these bales of hay and when i worked at the dallas museum of art they owned a, a print of this and every now and then it was in the collection it would go up on the walls and i always loved that print it was one of my favorites of laura's work another wonderful series are these portraits of artists that are taken in the West as well. This is Donald Judd at his home in Marfa, Texas from 1993. Uh, we also have Ed Ruscha in Venice, California, as well as Bruce Nauman. And this ends with, I'm going to end this with Richard Avedon since that's where we started. And Laura obviously, as I mentioned, was his research assistant on in the American West. And there's a wonderful portrait in here that was, she did this in other book, Avedon at Work, is a behind the scenes of, of that project. And how Avedon worked and I think it's a really important document um, as well because if you consider I mean how many of the great photographers out there had somebody shooting behind the scenes so we have a document of how they went about their process how they thought creatively how they worked with subjects and I think that's important and this is an image that uh, she said they pulled up on this sign that says the Rowley Mortuary and Avedon said you know one of his first cameras that uh, he took seriously was the Roloflex and he said that's where I want to be buried one day is at the Rowley Mortuary and so she said they pulled over and two of the photography assistants actually held Avedon out under the sign. And it was, I think, just kind of a bit of a nod to his sense of humor and the fun they were having doing this project. Um, this is one of the last portraits of Avedon made. She was actually with him when he died in 2004. They were working on a project um, with war veterans who were burn victims um, uh, near San Antonio. And I think it's serendipitous in many ways that Avedon having such an impact on Laura and her work 
and their relationship as friends. And she was the one who was with him when when he when he passed. And anyway, amazing book, and I recommend both of these. Um, I, I'll do a separate show on Avedon at work because I want to talk about Avedon. Um, this book, I I don't think this is in print anymore, but you can still find it on shelves. So if you were interested in Laura Wilson's work with Avedon, I would definitely recommend this. I'll link both of them in the show notes. And then that day is the catalog from the show that's currently on right now at um, Eamon Carter Museum. And it is absolutely fabulous. And I'll link both of those in the show notes, but that is the work of Laura Wilson. So this has been a little bit of an introduction to Laura's work. I think she is an absolutely fabulous photographer. She is somebody who has a large amount of respect uh, to the legacy and the history of photography that came before her and works very hard in this obsessive way to take that into her own direction. And I really think the world of her, obviously she's probably best known for her time with Richard Avedon and also for the fact that her three sons, Andrew, Luke, and Owen are very famous actors. But Laura is just absolutely fantastic. And I will put links to all of her work below. If you happen to be near Fort Worth, Texas, I highly recommend you go check out her solo show at the Eamon Carter Museum right now. It is a massive show and it is extremely good and it won't be up much longer. But anyway, I will link up to everything in the show notes. If you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to like it and share it with your friends. And as always, subscribe to The Art of Photography so you'll always be up to date on all the latest and greatest videos we do here. Until the next video, I'll see you later.